Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be looking at how to make an RTS camera controller system thing with pretty much all the features you will need and it is very simple to set up and you can of course customize it to better fit your game. Some of these features are keyboard movement, drag movement, edge screen movement, rotation with limits, map limits, zooming, and target follow. Before we begin, if you like game development content like game jams, tutorials, and devlogs, please do like and subscribe. Now let's get into the video. Here we are in a very empty project. All I really have is a camera, directional light, and instead of my usual plane, I have a terrain with big slopes so that we can see the camera's height changing accordingly. On your camera, create a new C-sharp script called Camera Controls. Open it and let's begin coding this beauty. Okay, up here we can just get rid of these two since we will not be using them. Add a required component of type camera just to make sure we have assigned this script to the right game object. We will need a bunch of different floats. Most of them are pretty self-explanatory. You will understand what they do as we use them. Add two vector twos for our limits and a vector three for the offset when we are following a target a transform to follow, a float to control our zoom, jaw and pitch which we will use to control the camera's rotation, a key code for drag movement, you can assign this to whatever you want. I will set mine to the scroll wheel. Same for rotation key. I will set mine to mouse right click. Another transform and a layer mask. Inside start we assign these last two main transform to be this camera's transform and we get the ground mask. We will use this ground mask later to calculate how far from the ground the camera should be. Now, if at start of the game your camera's X rotation is not zero, then we need to set the pitch to whatever value it is. In my case, my camera's rotation starts at 60 degrees, so I will set the pitch to my camera's X angle. We do this because the first time we press the rotation key, the camera's rotation will snap to pitch, which is the X value, and jaw, which is the Y value. These are set to zero by default. So if your camera's rotation is not zero, set the pitch and jaw in here. I only have to set its pitch. Inside update, we will call all our functions. But first, we need to create them. So let's go down here and we will add move, rotation, limit position, height calculation, and follow target. Going back to update, we will check if we do not have a target to follow, then we call the move function. And if we do, then we call the follow target function. Cool. Down here, we call the rest, rotation, height calculation, and limit position, in this order. Okay, we will begin with the longest and most complicated function, which is move. We first check if we have pressed the drag key, in which case we need to store this input in a vector 3, then we add the camera's Y position to this vector 3 and multiply it by time to smooth it out. Now we need to transform this from world space to local space, because currently, desired drag move represents a position in space rather than a direction. Luckily, we can do this very easily like this. Lastly, for drag move, we simply translate the main transform, which is our camera, and voila, done with drag move. If we're not dragging, then we are using the keyboard to move, so we store the keyboard input in a vector 3 and have to do pretty much exactly what we did above. However, I want to show you a different way of coding it. Just because, uh, why not, right? The more you know, the better. So here. This is the same as the above code, but written differently. Now we have to do the screen edge movement. Create a new vector 3, which will be the desired move. We also need the mouse position. So we will need a rect, which is a rectangle that contains x and y positions and width and height. Here we are creating a rectangle using the screen, width and height, then subtracting the screen edge border size variable which we can assign in the inspector later on. Using the mouse position and these rectangles, we can calculate where the camera is going to move. All we really have to do is multiply this with our screen edge speed and time to smooth it out. Then add our camera's Y position, 
turn it into a direction and finally move the camera. Alrighty, done with movement. Let's do rotation now. Check if we are pressing the rotation key, in which case we add to the job variable multiplying the rotation speed with the mouse X axis and remove the pitch using the mouse Y axis. Down here we need to clamp the pitch to avoid having it go beyond our limits and lastly assign these values to the camera's rotation. Inside limit position we only do one thing, but it is a pretty long line of code. We basically lerp the camera's position and inside the lerp we also clamp the X and Z values so that they do not go beyond our limits. Inside height calculation we add to the zoom amount the mouse scroll wheel axis multiplied by time and zoom sensitivity. Clamp 01 the zoom amount which basically returns a value between 0 and 1. Create a new float called distance to ground and this will be equals to a new function which is of type float called distance to ground. What this new function does is, well, calculate the distance to the ground, so we create a ray at the camera's position going down. Store the raycast hit info so we can later use it and then create the raycast using the layer mask. Inside here return the hit point at y value and outside we return 0. Cool, we now have the distance to the ground relative to the camera. Create a new float which will be the height we want. We calculate this by lerping the min and max height by the zoom amount. Lastly, we set the position of our camera using lerp. For the x value, we use the camera's x position. For the y value, we use the target height plus the distance to ground. And for the z value, we use the camera's z position. Alright, we finished the height calculation. Let's do the target follow. We first need to store the destination of our camera. We set this to the target's X position, the camera's Y position, and target's Z position. Add the follow offset at the end. Set the camera's position using vector3 move towards and the target pose variable. Okay, so when it comes to following a target and rotation, what we will do is first check if our follow rotation speed is bigger than zero, and also if we are not pressing the rotation key. In here we assign the direction by subtracting the camera's position to the target's position and normalize it. Now we turn this direction into a quaternion using look rotation and assign it to our camera's rotation. Down here we need to set the pitch and jaw accordingly. Last but not least we will create two public functions to assign the target. For testing purposes I will go up here to update and add this line of code to reset the target when we press escape. Wait, uh, wait a second. There's a typo here, mouse scroll wheel. The W needs to be a capital letter. Okay, nice. Back in Unity, we need to assign the ground layer to the terrain. You can see from this dropdown, I have a ground layer already created. If you don't have one, then simply click on add layer to create it. Another thing you have to make sure you have is the inputs. Go to project settings, input manager, expand this and you should be able to see horizontal, vertical, mouse X, mouse Y and mouse scroll wheel. All of these are added to your Unity projects by default. Assign your values then hit play. These are the values that work best for me. One last thing I want to show you is how to assign the target. I have created a sphere with a collider and have given it a script with this line of code. All it is doing is whenever we click this game object, we find the camera, get the camera controls and call the set target function using this transform. Of course, you can assign the target however you want. This is just an example. And that is pretty much it for this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching, thanks to my patrons, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.